the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Lord, in the name of Christ, forever. Beloved, today, the readings are of judgment. I mean, the first readings. As we read a pair of readings for the Sunday and a pair for Christina the Martyr. And so the readings for the Sunday are readings of a kind of judgment, two different judgments. And so when Christ is on the water, the disciples do not know what to do. And so Peter, with great boldness, says, If it is thee, O Lord, summon me to come out, and I'll come out. And Christ says, Come. And Peter does this really bold thing. He steps out onto water and does not sink. And this whole moment is a moment of judgment, not that God is judging Peter, but that Christ is letting Peter judge himself. What is the quality of his faith? Now, Peter could have stayed in the boat. He could have taken no risk. He could have said, well, Lord, if it's you, please come in. You know, but he said, if it is you, call me out. And so he does this bold thing and he goes out. And Peter's faith in the moment is very strong because he walks on water as if it is land. And he walks towards Christ. And his faith resounds in this moment. But then, as the wind picks up and the waves begin to slap against Peter, Peter begins to stumble a little bit and he begins to doubt. And as he doubts, he begins to sink because he breaks his connection with Christ. And so this moment is very important for Peter and it's important for us because <clears throat> this is a moment in which we can judge ourselves and Peter can judge himself. And, and Peter has pushed his faith to the fullest extent that it will go and he has found the limits of it and its weaknesses. He has to suffer that effect, but he can learn from it and he can grow from it. And so this moment is precious for him. And so it is necessary for us to always determine where we are. It's good for us to push our faith. And Christ calls us to a life of integrity, right? This is what Christ says to us. He says, Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Right? To take up the cross is a bold thing. To get out of the boat, to step down to water, that's a bold thing. To pick up the cross is a hard thing, a bold thing, a very difficult thing. And Christ asks it of us daily. And he asks us to live with integrity. To live with integrity means to live according to the cross. And so we should follow Peter in this matter. But we also have to do what St. Paul says. St. Paul says this. He says, examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. Unless indeed your faith has failed. Unless you have been separated from Christ. As Peter was in this brief moment. He was separated from him and then he began to sing. And so it's so important that we continually evaluate ourselves. Why? Because the second reading, or forgive me, the first epistle reading that the reader read was the reading of the final judgment in which Christians are brought before God. This judgment is not the judgment of unbelievers and believers. What Paul is talking about is only believers. Because Paul is talking about the rewards will be given for men who live well. Paul is saying there are those men who will stand before God and they'll have to pass through fire and their works will all be tried. Were their works made of gold, silver, precious stones? Were they made of combustible materials? Were they useless? Were they chaff? Right? What was the measure of the man's life? What was the integrity of his life? And so the final judgment, those Christians who are allowed to enter into paradise will also be judged as to what their life was like. What was the quality of their life? And if a man is not constantly laboring to live with integrity and he's not constantly checking himself, well, how can he verify the integrity of his works? How do he know what kind of life he has? We see that so much is built either on chaff or it's built upon something precious. The only way to do this is to live with integrity, to live by the gospel of Christ, to live in accordance with what he says. But how do you do this? How do you live well like this? How do you live so that on the day of judgment, your garments will be made of gold, your, your works will be of gold, your works will be of silver, your works will be precious? How can you live in such a way that you can have this? Well, you have to be as Peter is. You have to be bold in pushing forward, and that might mean that you stumble, but you have to be bold in pursuing it. At the same time, you must always look at yourself and say, where do I stand? Against the gospel, against the commandments, against the canons, against the saints, against the disciplines of the church. Where am I in this place? Where do I, where am I to be? But it's also important to do what Peter does, right? Peter does something else. Peter sinks, but then Peter calls out to Christ. He immediately says, Lord, save me. I'm going to perish. And immediately Christ snatches his hand and saves him. So beyond just following this aspect of Peter, we have to ask for help, as Peter did. There's all these stories about monks who go to Manathos, or men who are on Manathos, and they go around and they walk about and they see these people and they say, Elder, how can I be saved? And the elder says, say the prayer. <laughs> That's what he says, say the prayer. And they say, okay. And they go to another elder who's toiling away and they say, Elder, how can I be saved? He says, say the prayer. 
What does he mean by that? What does he mean when he says, say the prayer? What's really, really interesting is that St. Silouan made a comment about Genesis. You know, when oftentimes men read about Adam and they talk about Adam, they say, you know, Adam should just not have listened to Satan. He just shouldn't have listened. And the truth is, I'm not sure if Adam even spoke with Satan. Because Eve was the one who spoke with him. And when judgment is cast, Eve condemns Satan. Adam condemns Eve. You know, so forth and so on. And so did Adam really speak with Satan, or did he speak only with Eve? In any case, what St. Solomon says is not so much that should Adam have listened to Satan or not, but should Adam, when he was confronted with what Satan said, why did he not ask God to clarify for him in this moment? Why did he not say, God, what is my wife saying to me? Or what is Eve saying to me? Who is this person Eve is speaking with? And what does he mean? What does any of this mean? But Adam doesn't ask this question. He never does. He never asks God for any help in this matter. And so he just presumes. He just goes ahead. And so what follows after that is that he makes a tremendous mistake. Whereas St. Silon would say if he had asked, God would have illumined him immediately. And he would have said, don't talk to this person. Don't listen to what he says. What he says is not true. Eve has been deluded by him. You should not follow her. And you should actually rather help her. But Adam did not ask. And so God respects men's freedom. If men don't ask her, God does not necessarily have to force it upon us, but we should ask. And so how can we live with integrity, which is Christ? Christ is the measure of integrity. How can we live in integrity if we don't ask him continuously for help? And we have to live in Christ by the Holy Spirit. How can we live in the Holy Spirit and by him if we don't constantly beseech him? How can we please the Holy Trinity if we don't continually beseech the Holy Trinity for help? We can't do it. It's impossible. And so Peter has faith, but he sinks. And yet with prayer, he is, he is raised up again. And so our faith is weak, our faith is limited. Do we have to test it? Of course we do. We also have to literally ask for help. We literally must ask for help at all times. And now you see why the Holy Fathers would pray to Jesus for all the time. They would say it constantly, without stopping. Why? Because they came to the conclusion they could not have one thought that was good without God's help. They could not say one word without God's help. You know, what's interesting is that there are so many people I deal with when I hear confessions, and I can see it in my own life, their thoughts will come. A thought will come about this person, about some topic, about your wife, about your children. And this thought could be one of envy, of despair, all these different things. And yet, very rarely do men ever stop and say, What is this? What is this? No one stops. No one really looks. And that's a problem. Right? Men give rein to this thought. And this thought dominates them. And pretty soon they're led into some kind of place. So many times do men say things they should not say. They want to give advice for things that no one asked for. And they just go and do it. And instead of stopping and pausing and saying, should I ask this? Should I say this? They don't. They just speak. And rather, they should pray first. And how many people could go and do something? But the problem is, is that there's, some, there's many times when people know that they should go and do what is good. But not seeking God's help first, they don't accomplish even what is good. And much of the time, they don't know what is good to do. And so they don't, they don't pray either to seek this. And so by not seeking God's help, men cannot find the right way anyway. And so, despite having faith, they cannot even walk uprightly without God's help. <clears throat> and so, beloved, to follow God is very hard. To live with integrity is really, really hard. To constantly, tre to constantly press your faith is very hard. To constantly sink and rise again is very hard. And yet, what I would say to you is that those who don't test their faith, those who don't constantly pray, those who don't constantly labor, are they better off than those who do? And who suffers more? The reality is, that I would say, is that those who follow Peter, and those who follow Paul, who struggle and who examine themselves and who ask for help and who toil and labor and whose knees are callous because they kneel all the time, who are constantly prostrating, who are constantly praying, they're much better off. They struggle so much more, they labor so much more, but they're more at peace. Because the more they pray, the more they struggle, the more they labor to live with integrity and they undertake hard labors. What happens? They're not at enmity with their neighbors. They have peace in their hearts. They're actually in a much better place. Those men who don't undertake these heavy labors, but rather say, no, I will not labor. Laboring for God is very difficult. I will forego it. The suffering they will have later is so much greater because they will find themselves in all kinds of conflagrations, troubles, conflicts, issues, because they didn't undertake the labors to correct themselves before they made the mistake. They just went and did it. What are men to do? Is it really easier to live well or is it easier to live hard? It's much easier to live through heavy labor than it is to actually take it easy. Because when men don't undertake the labors to correct themselves, their life is harder. It's actually much harder. And I'm not even talking about the next life, I'm just talking about this one. So it's actually very, it is actually very, it behooves us to struggle. It really does. It behooves us to struggle greatly.
to do what Peter does, to get out of the boat, to test where our faith is. That's very uncomfortable, to put your faith to the test and to find that it's lacking. But then to say, well, it's lacking, but through God's mercy it can continue. And then to ask for the Lord for the help to continue. And not only that, to examine oneself and to see, to see where one is. And to, having evaluated oneself, to make the correction. This is not a pleasant way to live from the worldly standpoint, but it's the, it's the path of life that brings us consolation from God and brings us boldness with Him. And so this is how we should live. So beloved, like, when a man is going to build something, it's easy to pick up chaff, it's easy to pick up hay, it's easy to pick up wood. But it's hard to pick up gold, and it's hard to pick up silver, and it's hard to pick up precious stones. It's much easier to build with what is inferior than to build with what is superior. But if you build with what is superior, in the end it will be lighter. Your life will be a lot lighter. And so you should follow Peter, you should follow Paul, you should follow Christ. You should labor with gold, with silver, and with precious stones. And you should lay aside the chaff and let it be burned where it will fall. And live your life with integrity at every moment. And pray at every moment that you may have this integrity. Always, now, and ever, the ages of ages. Amen. Um.